Hi everyone, my name is Fred Groen. I'm the analytics specialist sales for Southeast Asia. I help customers around the region leverage data to solve tough problems. Today, we're going to share some learnings from Amazon Web Services experience helping customers get more value from their data. During this session, we'll also dive into the data lake architecture, how to gain momentum through your data initiatives through the data flywheel, and finally, a bit about Amazon.com's own journey. After my session, we'll be joined by my customer, Arno Egg, Chief Product Officer of Busy, who will discuss how they are using data to transform Indonesia's supply chain. We know data is a strategic asset for every organization, not just the Fortune 500 or digital native businesses. Data has gone from being something that was cumbersome and expensive to store to becoming the center of many companies' business model. Over the past five to seven years, a couple of key trends have got us here. First, connected devices, apps, and systems now generate more data than ever. Second, with cloud computing driving down the cost of storage, we no longer need to decide what data to keep. Third, with cloud computing providing on-demand compute, organizations can now more easily analyze their data to gain insights in a variety of different ways. Companies like Busy use data to drive decisions, like how to build new product offerings, where to discover new revenue streams, and what applications can enhance the customer experience. All of these decision points fuel innovation and drive businesses forward. But these data opportunities also come new challenges, managing and analyzing data. If you're in the habit of reading annual reports or pouring through pitch decks, data initiatives are center stage these days. The logic here is simple. If you're able to store every relevant data point about a business and can then analyze all of that data to direct your business strategy, you begin a data flywheel which can translate to a competitive advantage. But this process is by no means easy and requires a business to navigate a variety of challenges in concert over time, which not everyone can do. Gartner states business intelligence or data analytics solutions are the number one area where CIOs are increasing investment. In this same light, we hear from companies all the time that they struggle to capture, store, and analyze all the data generated by today's modern and digital business. Data is growing exponentially. It's coming from different sources. It's increasingly diverse, and at the same time needs to be quickly stored and made available. The ability to navigate these complexities and harness your data in your own context becomes a competitive advantage that is reinforced over time. The video game industry has always pushed the boundaries of technology. This holds true for their use of data. For the unfamiliar, the Epic Games title, Fortnite, is a massive multiplayer online game, or MMO, where players can cooperate on various missions to fight back against a mysterious storm and save the world, or attempt to be the last person standing in the game's battle royale mode. It's become a phenomenon, and it's free to play, which means its revenue comes entirely from in-game microtransactions. This means its business depends on continuously capturing the attention of gamers through new content and innovation. To operate this way, Epic Games needs up-to-the-minute understanding of gamer satisfaction, helping guarantee that the experience is one that keeps them engaged. Technically, this means managing large data volumes in real time across a variety of use cases. As can be imagined in the Fortnite scenario, analytics requirements of many modern businesses can be quite diverse. While analytics is a broad space, some common use cases emerge across most businesses, as do some common anti-patterns like data silos. As these use cases evolve in most organizations, you can be certain the personas interacting with the data will grow along with data volumes. Here it is important to have an architecture that accommodates and tools that are fit for purpose. As mentioned, Data silos are a common anti-pattern. As the amount of data accumulates, many companies find it lands in silos across functional teams or technologies, making it difficult to perform analytics. To deal with this challenge, customers are moving all of their data into a single repository, i.e. a data lake. A data lake has a few common design considerations. First, they allow customers to store data securely at any scale and at a low cost using the file format of their choice. Second, they give customers the flexibility to analyze the data in a variety of ways. Third, they are flexible to accommodate both existing and future use cases. Ultimately, unlocking these analytics capabilities means spending less time focusing on plumbing and configuring cloud analytics services, and more time investing in the activities that really matter to your business. With the anatomy of a data lake in mind, I wanted to return back to the Fortnite scenario. To keep up with its massive user base, Epic collects billions of game records per day, tracking virtually everything that's happening in the game. How players interact, how often they use certain weapons, and even the strategies they use to navigate the game universe. 
This translates to over 14 petabytes of data stored in their AWS data lake. It's growing at over two petabytes per month. It's a massive amount of information, which Epic tackles through both real-time and then batch analytics. This means that when the company introduces new elements and updates, they can use analytics to almost instantly learn how the Fortnite community is responding. Their ingest leads to two primary pipelines, one processing data in real time, and the second processing data in batches. The real time stream supports features like scoreboards, and the batch layer, they run bulk of their data processing on top of a S3 data lake. The results? They're able to guarantee gamers are engaged, translating to an incredibly successful game. Epic is not alone. They're in the good company of over 10,000 other customers who have built their data lakes on AWS. AWS gives customers the easiest path to build a data lake and start running diverse analytics workloads securely and at the lowest cost. When you are ready for more advanced analytics approaches, our broad collection of ML and AI services can be used against that same data in S3 to provide even more insight without the delays and costs for moving your data. Finally, unique offerings like AWS Lake Formation allow customers to set up a secure data lake in days. We know that treating data as an asset today requires some effort to be successful, and it is important to gain momentum early in the journey. Now I'd like to share a bit of information about the flywheel we see in successful data journeys. This flywheel is broken into two parts. First, modernizing your data infrastructure. Second, getting the most value out of your data. Your starting point is likely the need to get insights, but data might be growing rapidly and possibly in silos. The first step is to break free of legacy databases and move data to the cloud. This might mean moving data storage or a data warehouse, but whatever it is, the first move will become the foundation. Next, look for ways to save cost and time by moving to manage services for your data workloads. This allows you to avoid the pain of hardware, software installation, cluster setup and replication, and capacity planning and scaling. Once your data is in the cloud and management overhead has been reduced, teams are able to look for new and faster insights. Many times this might mean modernizing a data warehouse to get these insights and to be able to form more analytics on all of your data with the data lake architecture. Data lakes allow customers to store all their data in this native or open formats without predetermining the schema or the model for the data. This is huge as it allows customers to first query and analyze their data in one place without dealing with unnecessary data movement or worrying about silos. And second, it allows customers to perform any type of analysis on their data on an as-needed basis, including federated queries to operational databases or extending data warehouse queries into S3. Fourth, with modern data platform in place, the next step is often to use these new capabilities to support a data-driven application. Using these data assets to provide better capabilities and experiences for your end customers. Whether it's Epic Games' ability to respond to gamers in real time, Airbnb's personalized search, or Lyft's real-time location updates to drivers and riders, successful data strategies often lead to better customer experiences. Finally, once organizations start to build data-driven applications, deepen engagement with their users, or build more efficient processes, they begin to notice the reinforcing function of the data flywheel. The more data that can be analyzed and stored then allows for new insights about the business, which can create the foundation for new products and in the end create more data opportunities down the line. As a data-driven company, Amazon.com has had to deal with a lot of the challenges we discussed today. Given what we covered, I'd like to close by sharing a little bit about Amazon.com's journey as it highlights a lot of the points we discussed. Like many customers, we began with a monolithic data warehouse, which was complicated, expensive, and required engineers to spend hundreds of hours on undifferentiated tasks. Inefficient hardware provisioning required labor-intensive demand forecasting and capacity planning. And commercially, it didn't make sense to over-provision for peaks and lack the ability to scale with our business. Over time, many businesses grew, and many abandoned the monolithic data warehouse in favor of custom solutions using Amazon Web Services technologies around the data lake architecture like the one we just discussed. The new data lake architecture uses a variety of AWS services to deliver performance and reliability at exabyte scale for data processing, streaming, and analytics. We decoupled storage and compute with Amazon Simple Storage Service as a data lake to hold raw data in native format until required for analysis. This gave Amazon the flexibility to manage a wide variety of data at scale with reduced costs and improved access control. Amazon Redshift, our data warehousing service, also allows for integration with the data lake through the Redshift Spectrum feature, 
which allows users to query any data set in the lake directly from Redshift without needing to synchronize the data to their cluster. The results? The new analytics infrastructure has one data lake with over 100 petabytes of data, almost twice the size of the previous data warehouse. Amazon's consumer businesses have benefited from the separation of data storage from data processing in AWS. The data lake architecture allows each system to scale independently at lower cost. Users can easily discover high quality data with their choice of tools, and teams are reporting reduced latency for their analytics results. To close things out, the opportunities in data today are there for all businesses. And with AWS, it's never been easier to get answers from all your data to all your people. Whether you're at the stage where you're modernizing your data platform or just looking to get the most value from your data, we're here to help. Now I'm gonna hand things off to Arno Egg, Chief Product Officer of Busy, to share their journey. Thank you. Hey Fred, thank you for the introduction. So, first of all, I'd like to tell you something about Busy Digital. When we first started out, we started Busy Digital as a digital procurement company. We thought a lot of small, medium, and enterprise businesses had issues procuring their products. Not so much later we found out that it was not the problem in the procurement process. Yes, it could have been a little bit better and we could digitize some steps, and we did so. But the real problem was in the supply chain. That's when we started to digitize our distribution business and start building our supply chain platform. So our mission is to partner with brands and to empower SME's growth in Indonesia by integrating all stakeholders across the supply chain in an integrated, transparent, and exclusive supply chain platform. In Biz Digital, we were very lucky to have access to all parts of the supply chain. We have harbors, we have 26 warehouses across Indonesia, we have many small and big trucks, and we have about 200,000 retailers we serve every single day. Because of that, we could build products and test them out in real life. Beside that, we also have a team of very talented people bringing a lot of knowledge from all different parts of the business. So we have people who have been in supply chain for decades and we also have people from the digital side who also have been working in that space for years and decades themselves. As I already mentioned before, the supply chain in Indonesia is very inefficient. At the moment, 24% of the GDP of Indonesia goes to logistics costs. That is so much more than any other country in, in this region, let alone Europe or US. To sum up the current state in the Indonesian supply chain is that it's still very traditional, it's inefficient and not transparent. To solve these problems, we started to build many products and many POCs. As we have our own entities, we were able to, to test things very frequently and speed up the, the development. We tested out a lot of stuff which else we were not able to do with other partners because we started to do things out of the normal. We started to do things in a different flow, which normal people on the ground would not accept. But now because we were using our own entities, we were able to do so and we had some amazing results. So I discovered in the past that what we think is the solution or what the pain points are, are usually not the things we should look at at all. Because of that, I'm turning away from the crystal ball principles, I like to call it. So now we only do data-driven product development and busy. So before we could start any development, we need to start collecting data first. And that's where the real problem was, because we didn't have those data points yet. Our distribution was still very traditional and still mostly paper-based. So we started to add those data points in the process. We started to map it out step-by-step step, where we needed to start collecting data. And that was the first part of, the, of, of our project where AWS helped us a lot. So after we finished collecting our data, we started to see the real pain points for our retailers and our brands. So for our retailers, the biggest problem was that they wanted to understand when they could receive the products or if there was a delay, if we could inform them right on time. Usually they're alone in their stores because they're mom and pop stores. So it was a big problem for them. The second part was that they wanted to have better promotions and better pricing for their products. And the third point was that they needed help on the financial part as well. So they wanted to extend their credit limits or they wanted better payment terms. And we could not give them those because we didn't have data on their payments history as well. So as soon as we started to collect data, we could give them uh, better credit limits 
or help them to get financing for their, for their stock. The biggest problem for their brands was that they didn't know what was happening to their stocks as soon as they delivered it to the principals. So what they would like to know is how much stock are the distributors carrying? How much stock does a retailer have of their products at a certain time? How could they distribute their products better in different regions? Where's the demand the highest? And what can they do about price? For that, they all needed data, which they didn't have. They now are, are using paid reports to give them the data, but those are not precise. We wanted to give them that data in real time. To be able to get that data, we needed to build an end-to-end -end supply chain platform to increase efficiency. That's what we started to do, together with AWS, of course. So for brands, we created the principal portal. And also we created a portal in which principals could load into their promotions and also arrange their claim process. For finance and admins, we made a finance portal, but also a financial control tower to monitor credit and billing. For distributors, we build a warehouse management system and a transport management system, and also a supply and demand portal. For logistics, we built two products. One product is called Truckway, which is a driver app, which helps the drivers to optimize their delivery routes and also make sure they follow all the procedures and steps to give the best customer experience. To keep it fun for a driver, we're also using micro incentives. The second product is a fleet management system. This fleet management system can also route and it can be optimized for speed of delivery or cost optimization. To make it even more complex, we made it available for general trade and modern trade, which as you know, or maybe don't know, is a very difficult combination because they are two, two different types of delivery. So for our amazing people in the sales department, we made two products. One product is called BFF. Now that doesn't mean best friend forever. It means busy field force. And it has been built to help our sales agents on the field to visit customers, to help them route those customers so they don't spend time in, in traffic and also giving them all the information they need to make more sales. We also have a sales portal for managers. This portal gives the managers all the information of the sales agents, where they are at the moment, who have they been visiting, who are they going to visit and if they're hitting their targets yes or no. For our amazing retailers, we built three different applications. The first one is called Toko Smart which is an application which they can use on an Android or an iOS phone to restock their stores. They can buy from us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you think that's maybe quite normal. In the past, they were only able to restock once or twice a month as they had to wait for our sales agents to come by and take their orders. So now for them, it's much easier. And they're also getting access to many other products which they were not able to get before. The second application they got from us is called Busy Pos. So it's a point of sale, which also functions as a stock management system. By doing so, we were able to help these mom and pop stores to keep proper financial bookkeeping, but also keeping a proper visibility on their stocks, which they have in their stores. This also enables us to help them on financing part, because as long as we know how much they're selling and how much they're stocking, we can help them to get financing for their stocks and other reasons. The third application is a CMS which our team, but also the brands use to push new promotions. It makes it for brands very interactive to communicate with their own retailers right away. They can push different promotions in different regions for different types of stores, etc., etc. Very useful. So now these products are done and being launched, we can start collecting the data on how well they perform. And the initial results are amazing. So we now deployed all these systems to serve 50,000 of our 200,000 retailers. And if you compare those 50,000 with the other 150,000, the results and differences are quite good. The additional results for our retailers show that they're making 24% more revenue a month after they started using Toko Smart. Also, they ordered 55% more often from us, which is an amazing increase. Also, our gross margin increased by 11%. The initial results of our distributors were also very positive. In this market, it's normal to take usually a margin of 2%, but after using our tools, they were able to increase that to 3.4%. 
This is possible because we made things more effective, more productive, more measurable, but also we removed the cash. Because at the moment, most of the clients were paying in cash. And as soon as we introduced cashless payment options for those customers, we saw that the efficiency went up and also the fraud went down. We built all these products for a very simple reason. We would like to see that at least 1 million retailers are using our products so they can increase their efficiency and by doing so also increase the revenue. We also like to see that the cost of goods across Indonesia becomes more alike. And we don't see those big differences anymore in between provinces as we see these days. Because we were always continuing innovating at BZ, I would like to share you one little sneak peek of the one thing we are doing at the moment. We're working together with AWS again um, to build a POC using computer vision. This solution needs to use camera data, which is put on our trucks and our delivery uh, vehicles, to identify new stores which our sales agents can address. But also, we're going to use cameras, which our sales agents are going to wear, to identify products and product placement in the stores themselves. So we can understand for brands how their products are being placed. And if brands want to get better product placement, we can then incentivize the retailers to do so and help them to do that in the most efficient way possible as well. Also, as a side product, we can identify products we don't sell yet on Toku Smart and start contacting those brands as well so they can come on our platform. Okay, have a look at our video and thank you for watching. Busy Distribution is utilizing advanced computer vision technology to reach our mission to digitalize 1 million outlets. By equipping a vast network of more than 400 salesmen with cameras on their bike, we have an advanced view of the market conditions on the road and can effectively gather new potential outlets to serve. Pairing a custom-built model with abundant training data enables our machine learning algorithm to pick up and differentiate our targeted customers such as restaurants and cafes, pharmacy, printing center, as well as Warung through advanced object composition analysis. This big data information allows us to have visibility over population distribution mapping in each region providing us with powerful insight on where to deploy our salesmen. This way, we have optimized the store onboarding process, welcoming these stores into our TokoSmart family. Computer vision also helps us to zoom in even further and touch the granular details of our customers so we can understand them better. Using advanced SKU detection on their mobile phones, our salesman team can quickly and seamlessly note down the goods being sold in the store with a single push of a camera button. All these informations are neatly captured, stored, and displayed in our database so we can cross-sell our products better, have stronger grip over supply demand prediction, Join us in this initiation to empower clean economy for everyone. Hope you enjoyed the last video. And if you have any more questions for me, you can always contact me via email at arnold.sebastian at busy.co.id.